Why is it that projects always take longer than I say they will? Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. We are again working on the table and this is a really fun project, one that I'm really looking forward to getting upstairs, uh, but it's finally coming along and you can see the table is, is starting to grow uh, from the top down or upside down as it would be. Uh, I do have plans for this on my website if you'd like to follow along and see all the joinery, but today we're gonna be working on these verticals. Last time we put on the horizontal and all of the structure that goes immediately underneath the table and these will be the main legs. There will be other diagonal supporting structure in the future. Uh, but for right now, we're going to be hitting these. So let's dive in and take a look at the uh, joinery on these. Now first, I wanted to hit the underside of this tabletop. Uh, the undulations from the epoxy just weren't fitting perfectly with the smooth surface of the base, and I wanted to play around with the scrub plane and see how much work it took to take that off. And in all honesty, it was a lot more work than I was expecting. So I'm going to rethink this and uh, come back and hit this in a future time. So while my brain is working on that, I'm going to take apart the base and start working on the next step of the structure. And that's going to be putting the verticals onto these stretchers. So let's take the whole thing apart and bring over all three of the stretchers and clamp them together so that we can start doing the joinery between those and the vertical, which we'll be making here in a minute. First thing I need to do is measure in from the end. And to do that, I have a square on the end and a tape measure coming off of it so I know exactly where to make the first mark. Once I have that first mark made, then I can square it off and run all the way across all three pieces so that I have the same mark at the same location on all three pieces. And then I'm gonna bring over an actual board um, to know what the actual thickness is, not just the measurement I have in the plans. And uh, that way, if there's any variation in the boards, I'll be making the correct width here so that it fits much better. Once I have the width of the slot made, then I can cut down on either side. And I'm going to use a square to mark those lines so I can follow that with the saw. Then for the depth mark, I'm going to grab a marking gauge and I'll put that at three inches. Making a mark three inches down, that'll be the depth of the cut on either side. So it'll be three inches deep by an inch and three quarter inch wide. Um, about, well, it's about inch and three quarter. It's a little bit sloppy from that. Once I get those depth marked, we can then grab a saw. And for this, I'm going to be using a panel saw with a cross cut teeth. Uh, just a bigger saw makes cutting through this much material a little bit easier. I could use my, my uh, carcass saw, but in this case, this saw is actually really kind of nice. So I'll cut one side, and then I'm going to cut the other side um, all the way down on my side of the board so I can follow the line. Then with these vices on here, I can grab the whole item, pick it up, flip it around, and then cut from the other side. And that way, I will always be able to see the line that I am cutting on. And second verse, same as the first, slicing down. Uh, just being very careful to follow the line and not go too deep, waiting until I get to the depth stop on both the front and the back, and voila. Now, if you know anything about this channel, you know that this is my all-time favorite part. Um, grabbing a chisel and removing material quickly is just a fun thing. I'll chop away from one side and then a little bit into the middle, and then I'll bring the chisel around and chop away from the other side. That way I'm never blowing out the far side of the board. I'm just going to slowly make it down, each time going about halfway to the line until my halfway to the line is almost impossible to hit. And then I'll come in and clean it out with a paring cut. Now, if I had a router that would be deep enough, I'd come in and clean it out with that. But most routers only go down to about an inch or seven-eighths of an inch. And so in this case, I'm just going to grab it like a golf club and stab cut in. Now for the verticals, we need to flatten out one end and actually make sure that it is square to the end. So I'm going to put it on the shooting board and clean that up. If you don't have a shooting board, I'll show you another step uh, in a little bit that you can do it without that. Uh, but once I have one end nice and clean and 90 degrees, I'm going to measure in 2 foot 5 inches. Now this is the height of the table from the floor to the underside of the table. This is how much space I have for my legs to fit underneath the table. So it's a fairly critical me measurement. And I'm going to put a mark at one end, slide the square up against the, uh, the marking knife, and then mark all the way around the board. With a mark all the way around the board, I can put it into the vise and cut away. Just follow that line down. Now, as I like to do, follow the line on my side of the board, so I'm going to lower the saw and cut at a weird angle. A lot of people much prefer to do this on a saw bench. It just is a little bit more comfortable for them. But for me, I really like doing it this way. I know I'm weird, but oh well. <laughs> Once I cut from one side, then I can flip it around and cut from the other side. And this way, I make sure that I always am watching the line on my side. And I get a really nice clean line that I don't have to clean up very much. 
Now that I have one board cut, I'm going to use that as my reference to mark out both of the other legs. This way I know that they're all exactly the same length. With that mark in there, then we can then mark all the way around the board and make sure that we get all of these boards cut exactly the same. And more of the same. Once that's done, I'm going to shoot the other end. And rather than using the shooting board, I'm just going to use a block plane. Uh, you could do this with a low angle jack. I'm just going to miter the ends a little bit and then clean up any of the rough marks. Um, I could do it with just the block plane, but I find it a little bit easier to grab the low angle jack plane and do the final detail. Just taking a shaving off the end, bringing it down right to the line that I made. And there, you have a square end. It's not that hard. Now we can clamp all three boards together, pound them into place uh, so that I know that they're all lined up exactly because we need to make the joinery cut in the end of these to match the stretchers that we made earlier. Once they're all lined up and exact, I can do the exact same markings that I did before. Make a mark, uh, put the board on here, mark out the exact width of the board as opposed to what the measurement should, says it should be. This way you can get a far more accurate marking and uh, you know that it's going to be real. Once I have those marks across there, then I grab the square, transfer the lines down, grab a marking gauge, put in the depth of cut, exactly the same as I did before, except for in this case, it's in grain as opposed to cross grain. Now for these, uh, I could have used a panel saw, which I probably should have, but I was really comfortable with my tenon saw, and it had a deep enough cut. Uh, these need to go down three inches, I believe it was. And so it was a fairly deep cut. Looking back on it now, I probably should have used a panel saw with the larger teeth, but I'm okay with this, and uh, it just took a moment longer. And it was a little bit of fun. So a good bit of wax on the plate, as you can see, keeps everything moving, especially through such a large, meaty cut. Now to chop out the waste in between the two cuts on this, I'm going to be chopping them much like I would taking the waste in between dovetails. I have a planing stop on one end to hold the board from sliding, and then hold fasts, locking the board down to the bench. I'll start by making stop cuts in about a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch away from my marking gauge line, and then pair out down to that stop cut. And it's going to be much the same as this, rinse and repeat, remove a little bit of waste, chop down a little bit, remove a little bit of the waste with the uh, pairing, back and forth, back and forth, and I'm telling down about halfway down through the board. Seems like it's going to take a lot of time, but it really only takes, what, 40, 50 seconds per side, and we're ready to move on. Once I'm down about halfway, then I'm going to put the chisel right in the marking gauge line and keep it vertical and pair straight down. Uh, sometimes I don't go completely vertical. I'll undercut just a little bit, so I tip it in towards the board, just so that there's a, a leeway of a gap in there, which is perfectly fine. Then I'll flip the board over, do the exact same thing until I remove that chunk in between, and then pair out the waste. Giving yourself a nice uh, clean joint ready for the touch up and finishing. Basically we have two joints that should work well together, and in this case one of them worked really well and you can test one on the other, but then the second half of the joint didn't work well. Um, so it just needs to be removed, it need a little more material removed, and I kind of plan it that way. I'll use a square to mark out uh, precisely how much bigger I need to make the joint in order to fit it in there. And then I'm going to come in with a chisel and pare out the waste. In this case, the grain was going the, uh, the wrong direction, so I couldn't pare down from the end. Otherwise, the grain would make the chisel run away into the block of wood. And so I'm just going to stab cut in through the wood. I'm angling it out away so that I know that if I blow out the other side, I'm not going to be hitting the fibers on the other side. I'm just digging into the wood a little bit. Only need to take off about a, what, 30 second of an inch to make this thing fit. And in this case, I fit it in there, and on the first try, it actually worked out pretty well. It's a little tighter than it probably should be. I should come back and clean off a little bit, but in the future, I'm going to be coming in and smoothing out these boards, and I'll be taking off a little bit of the thickness when I do that. So a little bit extra force needed to drive it in is not a huge issue. Using a uh, soft-faced leather mallet, you can pound it down in, and that is one really nice tight joint that is not going to come loose anytime soon. <laughs> Once I have that in place, then we can take it over the table and bang the joinery together and actually put this together on the tabletop. So each time I can take it apart, I can put it back together, and this whole thing will be put together without nails or hardware or any joinery technique other than gravity itself holding the table base together. A lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to getting this thing upstairs. So there you have it. Um, I was hoping to have a little bit more joinery done on this, but oh well, um, you know how life goes and sometimes you win and sometimes you don't. 
but uh, hopefully next time we will have the, well, the reverse of the bottom structure then flipped up and put on top of this. I haven't quite figured out what I want to do with joining the base to the tabletop. Um, I want to keep the natural aspect of the top, so I'm not going to be hitting much in that. Um, and part of me says you really need to adjust the, uh, the base structure to fit the undulations in the bottom of the table. And I kind of like that idea. But then part of me says, no, flatten the table and make it all fit. Uh, there's there's that, that perfectionist part of me that really wants to flatten the table. Uh, but then there's the, the historical part of me that's like, no, I really want to see this structure and design underneath. So I don't know which will win out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, if you like this video, please like, comment, and share. Those really do help out the channel. I would do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon, as well as those who have purchased t-shirts and card scrapers and plans on my website. That is really helping Wood by Wright stay in business and to keep going. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day.